Um, now we are moving on to budgeting. Um, how do you guys typically approach your budgeting? So let's say you have a campaign coming out or you have some objective you want to achieve in the next three months. How do you typically approach budgeting? Do you allocate a budget and kind of set a target based on that budget? Or do you, do you start with a budget and see how things go and then yeah. more increase the budget? Can we speak? Can I said? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, actually, we have a set of goal uh, how many how much of user we want. And we have the previous CAC, how much acquisition was before in last month. Then we make a little bit of improvement in the CAC. Suppose we are the our acquisition be 20, we make it 19 or 18, and this yeah. increase a little bit of the budget. Then we see the result. Got you. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And that's typically the, the better way to go about budgeting is to to, to have the starting point as your uh, as your as your end goal, like you mentioned. All right. Uh, so let me see. We have a chat here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. All right. Um, so we're gonna look at um, kind of overall budgeting uh, factoring again. That, assuming that we, you're a business owner and you're planning out budgeting for all the different uh, you know areas or things that you need budget for, like custom marketing. Um, so this one way of looking at it, you probably split your budgets into uh, team costs. So that consists of you know, salaries of people that you're going to be hiring or uh, and also giving training. Uh, training is, is obviously important to, to have in place, especially if you're looking at the six months or one year budgeting plan, you probably want to factor in uh, training. Uh, then you have media spend. And this is where a lot of the question marks usually come, um, how to budget for uh, campaigns, uh, paid media campaigns. And then you have agency costs in the case where you're outsourcing to an agency. Uh, you have your tools costs. Um, and most likely, if you're running a full operation in marketing, you probably want to have, uh, you're going you're gonna to factor in a cost for a CRM tool, uh, some SEO tool, uh, some probably CRO tool, so conversion optimization tool, uh, maybe social media management tool. Uh, but these are all tools that are necessary in uh, any marketing activities, you might also add uh, other ones. And of course, you want to have uh, allocate budget for creative production. <clears throat> so this could be um, videos or images, but you also might need um, copywriters, let's say in the case of black copies. Uh, yeah, so these are, I would say, we're looking at salaries related to marketing, right? So for now, we're specifically looking at marketing budgeting. Um, so yeah, so these would be salaries of people that are going to be working in the marketing. Now, of course, if you're not hiring anyone in house, then you might slash that row out and maybe you're outsourcing, uh, or even if you're doing everything yourself, then, uh, then you don't have salaries or agency costs. Uh, but just make sure that if you're doing a one year budget plan, uh, you want to factor in uh, that potentially that down the line you might hire someone, or, uh, whether in house or outsourced. Uh, yeah, so CRO is conversion rate optimization. Um, and this is an area where you uh, you do uh, analysis of the users on your website or app and uh, do things like A-B testing. So tweaking the site and tweaking the experience on your website or app to try and get more people to convert on your site. So basically growing your conversion rate over time. Uh, that's what CRO is. Uh, it's a very important, it's a very important topic uh, and marketing activity that applies to literally any sector, uh, any business type. Uh, and a lot of companies actually don't pay so much attention to it, but it has a very, uh, very important value. It's a lot of value for your, uh, uh, for your marketing activities. Um, all right, so Alvok mentioned, does it work if you don't have any historical data? Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna come to that uh, in the coming slides. So we're gonna look at the method to um, to kind of uh, estimate your, your budgets. Okay, so what we're looking at here, all of these items, you can kind of figure them out 
pretty much uh, if, if you sit and kind of think about it. Uh, when it comes to media spend, I think we, we need to follow some logical steps to come up with budgets that are tied to our goal that we're trying to achieve. Uh, so that's where we're going to spend some some time now on basically figuring out how to come up with budgets for your uh, media campaigns. All right. Um, we're going to look at this in two scenarios. So the first scenario is in the case of lead generation. So you're a business, probably B2B, could also be B2C, but your objective here, your overall goal is to generate leads on your website or app. Um, so like you guys mentioned, what we're going to do is we're going to work uh, backwards from the end goal here. So assuming that we want to close five customers in the next, let's say, six months uh, or three months or whatever the period is. So that's our end goal here, five customers. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to identify or figure out or estimate how many conversions or leads uh, you need to generate in order to um, acquire those five customers. And you can figure this out by looking at your lead to customer ratio or rate. Uh, so you can think of this as a conversion rate between uh, lead, leads and customers. So essentially, in other words, how many leads do you need to generate in order to get five customers? Now that figure, assuming that it's, let's say for 10%, um, this is really the metric that you have to figure out in order to get this number. Right, so the lead to customer rate uh, is the metric, that is the connecting metric that you have to estimate. All right, so where do you get this number? Um, the best source for that would be your internal records. In the case where you have historical data, so in the case where you're, um, you've, you've been operating for let's say a month or two or a few months or a few years or whatever, you can look at your historical data and look at any given period of time, how many leads were generated in that period of time, how many customers were closed from those leads, uh, and that would be a ratio or a rate. Um, all right, so what about a case where you're a new business, you have no uh, you know, benchmark for that? A couple of ways you can go about this. One is you can research online on average benchmark of lead to customer ratio in your sector. Now, this is gonna give you a very, a uh, broad benchmark. Of course, it's not tailored to your region. Uh, it might be tailored to your sector, but again, it's going to be an overall average. Right? Now, you can still use that because uh, you're starting from scratch. You have no reference for it whatsoever. It's okay to use an average benchmark that you find online. Right? Now, the thing with this is that even if you set a number now, uh, when, once you launch your campaigns and the marketing machine starts working, uh, that number will become clearer, right? So you, you'll actually see if your number is actually 10 or maybe it's five or maybe it's 20 or maybe it's 20. But at least you know that your reference point is the average benchmark that other businesses uh, that are also B2B, that maybe are also in your sector have had before, okay? So you would still have some reference point of average benchmarks that you find online, okay? Okay, so let's assume that your lead to customer rate is 10%. And this is, by the way, is a sensible number. It's not uh, unrealistic. A lot of sectors might have a lead to customer rate of, um, of 10%. Um, all right. Um, now, so you figured out that in order to get five customers, roughly you need to drive 50 leads. The next step is you wanna figure out how many visits I need to send to the website in order to get those 50 leads or 50 conversions. And you can figure this out by using conversion rate, right? So uh, assuming that your conversion rate on the website historically has been around 3%. So this means that if you drive, in order to get 50 leads, you need to drive around 1,600 visits to the website or clicks to the website, okay? Again, where would you get this number? You can get this number either from your historical performance. Uh, so if you've been, you know, if you've had your website uh, up and running for um, for some time, you can just look at the conversion rate of the last thirty days, say, and that's going to give you the current average conversion rate. So you can use that in your 
calculations here. Or if you're starting up from scratch, you have no reference point whatsoever, again, you can find average benchmarks online. Um, and again, when it comes to conversion rates in the case of a lead generation website, the range of conversion rate is not huge, right? So you're still looking at somewhere between three to 10%, let's say, right? You're not gonna be looking at 50% conversion rate or 40%. At the same time, you don't, you don't want to have the 0.5%, right? So kind of the, the range you're looking at somewhere between three to 10. Um, so you can use that as uh, in your calculations here. So now I know that in order to get five customers, I need to send 50 leads, I need to generate 50 leads for conversions on our website or from anywhere. And I want to uh, send or at least reach a thousand, basically bring a thousand six hundred uh, users to my site, to our website. Now, up to this point, you can use this estimation for um, any organic activity. Right, so if you're doing SEO and uh, or if you're doing uh, organic content marketing, or if you're doing any form of organic activity, let's say, uh, these are figures that you can to some extent use. Right now, again, you're not going to be using exactly 3% and 10%, whichever, but uh, these might differ a little bit from one traffic source to another, uh, especially conversion rate might change from on organic activity versus paid activity. But the steps are the same, right? So you look at your bottom line goal, you see how many leads you need to generate to get customers, and you see how many visits you need to get to get those leads or conversions. Okay? Now, in the case of budgeting for ad campaigns, because here the purpose of this exercise is budgeting for your media uh, spend. What you want to figure out now is what is the budget or the spend required to generate this number of clicks. And you can get this number using what connecting metric we use here. What's the connecting metric that we would uh, use here to estimate the budget required to get those numbers of clicks? Anyone? Um. Okay. Cool. Cost per click. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I'm sensing that you guys are zoning out. Are you zoning out? Or are you still with me? <laughs> still with you. Still with you. All right. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Cool. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right. Um, so we're going to be looking at CPC. Um, okay. So then in this case, um, in order to get those numbers of number of clicks, um, I would probably need to spend $2,000. Where did I get this number? From my average cost per click. Again, where would I get this cost per click number? Um, yes, sorry, in hashtag with star. Let's, let's have this trending on the end of the, <laughs> the session. Okay, um, this CPC $1.2, you can get this either from your historical performance. So again, if you've done campaigns before, you can just easily look at your CPC for the last three days or for whatever the activity is. Or if you don't have any activities, you're starting from scratch, again, use online benchmarks, okay? Use average CPC of this channel, uh, whatever, okay? Uh, so you can still get benchmarks. Um, for example, Google Ads, you can actually get benchmarks from the Keyword Planner tool. Uh, I'm sure you guys have used it. Uh, if you input a bunch of queries that you want to target in Google Ads campaigns, the tool is going to tell you the, the average bids that other advertisers have used in their uh, to show their ads. Okay. All right. So using these steps, um, okay. Yeah, absolutely. CPC, uh, especially CPC, I would say, differs uh, compared to other metrics like conversion rate uh, or maybe CTR. CPC specifically tends to vary from one uh, country to another. Yeah, correct. So you have it varies from one platform to another and also varies from one country to, to another. Okay, so using these steps, we have figured out that in order to get five customers, I need to generate 50 leads. In order to get 50 leads, I need to send 1,600 users or visits or clicks. And in order to get those clicks, I need to spend this amount of money. Okay. Now, the next thing you wanna do is you just wanna, um, you just wanna look at the cost per lead here. 
so the cost per lead, if you follow these numbers, if you follow this plan, your cost per lead is going to be $40. So you're dividing 1,000 by 50. So each one of these leads is going to cost you 40. And if you follow this plan and you achieve these numbers, your cost per acquisition or cost for acquiring those customers is going to be $400. Exactly. So your CAC is uh, $400 in that case. Okay. Um, now, the next step you want to do, which I will skip for now, but I will cover in the coming slides, is basically comparing that CAC to your average customer value. Okay, so we're gonna to come to that in the coming slides, but for now, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stay here. Okay. Now, why is this important when you're planning out your budget? This is not only important for um, for budgeting, but it's also important for having uh, KPIs or kind of yeah, I would say KPIs to follow as you're running the campaign. So, what do I mean by that? You'll notice that the three metrics that influence everything are basically those three, CPC, conversion rate, and lead to customer rate. So if your CPC goes up, naturally your budget is gonna go up. If your conversion rate goes down, you will need more clicks, which means you'll spend more. If your lead to customer rate goes up, you will need less leads to acquire this, which means less clicks, which means less budget. So these three, um, these three uh, metrics over here are basically the levers that you use or influence to basically change everything else. Okay, so your your budget, your cost per lead, and your CPA are directly influenced by these three metrics down here. Okay, so these are really the things that you want to be optimizing when you're running the campaigns. Now, why is it important to have this in front of you? before you launch things. Because if you didn't have these steps in front of you, if you didn't have this picture in front of you before you launch your campaigns, and let's say you've, you've put a budget of, I don't know, $3,000 and you launch your campaigns, and you realize that you're not getting customers or you're not getting the right amount of leads. If you don't have these numbers in front of you, you will have no idea where the problem is. Is the problem in my conversion rate? or is the problem in my CPC, or is the problem in my lead to customer rate. Okay? Um, so if you don't have these mapped out from the get-go, it's going to be harder for you to know where to optimize. Yeah. Uh, vice versa, when you have this in front of you, then when you launch the campaigns and you see that you're not getting your customers, uh, and let's say you see that your lead to customer rate is 10% or around 10%, you see that your conversion rate is 3%, but your CPC is 5%. So then you know that the first thing you need to optimize here is trying to maybe lower your CPC. Or if you see that your conversion rate is very low, you might want to work on your conversion rate. So it, it, makes your, uh, it makes it easier for you to, uh, to know where, to, where the problem is, right? Uh, wh where is the leakage happening? You need to, and then it's easier for you to fix and then work on that. Okay? Now, I can, I can guarantee you that most businesses don't have that picture in front of them before the launch campaigns. And uh, this is, I'm talking from working for 12 months in this, in this, uh, in this career. Uh, most business, businesses don't, do not have this picture in front of them before they launch campaigns. They basically launch campaigns and then they try and figure things out as they go. Of course, this takes you more time. There's more wastage of money. Uh, and it's basically just, you're, it can be confusing and, and frustrating at some points when you don't know where the problem is. Um, so having this very clear in front of you and also having it clear in front of not only the marketing team, but also the sales team, yeah, um, it can really help align everyone and, and just have a, a full picture of, um, of these uh, KPIs that you need to follow. Now, another thing is that when you have these numbers before you launch your campaigns, it's very normal that after you launch your campaigns, you might see that realistically with your audience, with your campaigns, with your website, with everything you're doing, these numbers can be a little tweaked a little bit, okay? Uh, so you might find that the CPC that you originally started with was maybe higher than what your, what your market, what you're getting with your actual campaigns in your market. Or you might find that the conversion rate is, um, you know, 
or a little too high. I might find the lead customer rate is a little too low. So basically you can always go back to this plan and tweak things. Okay? Um, and I will, I'll show you in the coming slides, the, the final step that you need to add in your planning, which is comparing your cost per acquisition or CAC to your, to the average value that you generate or revenue that you generate from a business. Okay? All right, so that's for lead generation. Now we're gonna move on to um, e-commerce. Okay. okay, in the case of e-commerce, the steps are very similar, but it's, it's just one uh, less step. Okay, so again, we're gonna start from our end goal. Let's say I wanna generate 100 transactions or conversions. Uh, what, what, what do you guys think is the, the next metric that I want to estimate here? Following the, the same step, sorry? Conversion. So conversions, we already have it here. The target is the target that we want to achieve is 100. Uh, what would be the, the next metric and sequence backwards? Uh, yeah, so Shireen, in this case, we can use conversion rates. Exactly, that would be the connecting metric. And what would be the metric that, would, that we would estimate using conversion rate? Initiate checkout or add to cart? Yeah, so you can, you can have add to cart or you can, um, uh, you can jump straight to clicks. Yeah, so you can work it in whichever in whichever way you want. In this case here, in this scenario, we're looking at directly straight at clicks. Um, so let's say you have a, a phenomenal conversion rate of 3% on a new commerce website. Um, so this means that in order to generate 100 transactions, you need to send around 3,333 clicks. And we're using here the connecting metric is that we're assuming that the conversion rate is going to be 3%. Um, so, um, so over here, we're looking at, um, 3% again, whether it's from historical performance or from average, uh, industry benchmarks. Okay. What's the next step after identifying the number of clicks is figuring out how much money I need to spend to get those clicks. Yeah. So what's the connecting metric? Same as before. It's going to be. Yeah, CPC. yeah, absolutely right. So we're gonna look at CPC. So assuming CPC is one point five dollars, then we need to spend five thousand dollars to get those numbers of clicks. So to get hundred transactions or conversions, we need to send this number of clicks, and to get this number of clicks, we need to invest five thousand dollars based on this uh, estimated CPC. Okay. All right. The next thing we want to do now is figuring out our cost per acquisition or cost per order. Right, so in this case here, it's $50, 5,000 divided by 100. So now I know that if I follow these numbers, my cost per acquisition or cost per order is going to be $50. Again, same principle, guys. The two metrics or the two levers that influence everything are your CPC and your conversion rate. So if the more you improve your, the more you lower your CPC and, and, and improve your conversion rate, Everything will be, everything will improve, right? Your CPA is going to go down, and your profitability is going to go up, and all that. Okay? So these are the two levers. That's why when I was talking about conversion rate, I mentioned that it's a very important metric because it has a direct impact on your cost effectiveness. When this goes up, this goes down. Yeah. Uh, same thing here. When this goes down, this also will go down. Okay. Assuming that the conversion rate is the same. Um, all right. Now. The next step, which is very important in your planning, is knowing whether that CPA is profitable for you or not. So let's assume here that the average order value is $40. All right, so this means that you're spending $50 on every order, but you're making $40. Now, what do you guys think? Is this a good plan in this case? Or what's the... I mean, we'll make up for it in volume, right? That's a disaster, by the way. Disaster, disaster. How many values will not change? Uh, what is the lifetime value of this? Yeah, I mean, of this uh, yeah. Uh, line. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, exactly right. So, 
uh, on you know on the, on the first on a first uh, on a first look, uh, you would probably say that this is um, that this is probably not a good plan because we're spending more than we're making. But like you guys mentioned, when we factor in uh, repeat purchase, things change, right? So so right now we're looking at CPA of fifty dollars and a revenue of forty from one order, and here the ROI is zero point eight. So of course negative ROI doesn't look good. But then if that one customer in second month uh, buys again, uh, so now the overall revenue generated by that customer is 80, again in month five, if they buy again and again, now we're looking at $110. Um, and, so, um, and so then you have your ROI is 2.2 um, ROI, right? So when you, when you basically expand your time horizon and look at the lifetime value of that one customer that you've generated, the picture changes, right? So now we're not comparing. Uh, we're not comparing the first time uh, value yeah. compared to your CAC, but you're literally looking at the lifetime value. So oh, here okay. now things look much better. Now the average lifetime value is 110. So then when you compare it to the uh, cost of acquisition, it makes it makes sense. Now keep in mind that, of course, here we're looking at purely just the marketing cost. Like of course, you uh, as a business you factor in other operational costs, but for now we're just talking about just purely marketing costs, right? So comparing your uh, cost of acquiring that user and the, the lifetime value revenue that you generate from that user. Now, why is this important? It's important because, um, let's go back to this uh, plan. So let's say we did the, the steps and we stopped here. We didn't look at the, the lifetime value. We, we didn't factor that in our plan. We looked at this and we saw that this is not a good plan because we're making less than what we're spending on that order. What's gonna happen next? You're gonna change your plan, correct? You're gonna try and change the plan. So maybe you're gonna try and bring this down. You're gonna lower your CPC, your, your target CPC. Maybe you're gonna try and increase your conversion rate, okay? The problem is when you, when you start squeezing those two metrics too much, this might actually have a negative impact on your overall activity. And the reason being is this, uh, squeezing your conversion rate too high, you have to know that conversion rate will always have a ceiling. Okay, so in any website, it's not like you can always uh, increase your conversion rate. At some point, your conversion rate is gonna happen, it's gonna plateau, right? So you're gonna improve it a bit, and eventually it's gonna plateau. It's not, it's not, gonna, uh, it's not gonna continuously grow forever. So you, so you have a ceiling in your conversion rate. Now, when it comes to CPC, If you squeeze your CPC too much, what's going to happen is because all of these ad platforms, uh, the the way that you have your ad appearing for a user um, on, on whatever the platform is, whether it's Facebook or Google or this or that, one of the factors they look at is your bid. Okay, so how much are you bidding as an advertiser? And uh, just a very quick recap: a bid is the maximum that you as an advertiser are willing to pay per click. Okay. Now, if you squeeze your bid too low, what's going to happen is that that will negatively impact your reach, right? So the, the, your capability of exposing your ads to users continuously squeeze your CPC too much or your bid, okay? So you're going back to this exercise here. When you look at this plan and you immediately um, uh, disregard this plan because you're looking at the value compared to the CAC and it's lower, What's going to happen is you might continue to start lowering your CPC. And if you lower it too much to a point where you're limiting your exposure, obviously that's going to negatively impact your um, the, you know, the overall performance because you're reaching less people and eventually you're going to get less results. So when you go and when you factor in, when you expand your time horizon and, and you factor in lifetime value, what you're doing is you're giving your campaign room to breathe, right? You're, you're not squeezing your bids too low. You're not squeezing your CPCs too low. So you're giving room for a campaign to breathe and to reach people and to optimize, okay? So that's why it's very important in your planning, um, not only for just figuring out how much budget you need, but also for figuring out your KPIs um, and targets that, that you want to uh, that you want to achieve, okay? All right, any questions or, on any of this? All good? All good. Okay. 
All right, so going back to this overall uh, budget planning, now we have our team costs and now we can plug in our media spend or estimated media spend on uh, any given month. And then you can, uh, can then uh, scale this uh, over, over whatever period of time. So let's say we're looking at six months or one year. And ideally you want to have that month by month, uh, monthly. Um, and you wanna also factor in any changes of those numbers, right? So let's say in the case of salaries, you're running with this team and then you want to hire an additional uh, person here. So then you know that your budget is gonna have to go up in that, in that section. Uh, with training, let's say you're doing uh, training round here and another one over there. Your media spend, let's say you're gonna start off with, with eight and then you want to grow your numbers. So you're gonna increase the budget. Uh, let's say you have another special campaign here in month four. So you factor that in your planning, you go down to the to the same uh, always on spend, and then you increase the budget again for month six. Uh, agency costs, same thing. If you expect to uh, maybe stop working with an agency at some point later on, you might you want to factor that into your overall budgeting. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, same thing with tools. Uh, you want to factor in any changes in, in the costs of these tools. So typically with CRM, uh, it's uh, the, the price is, is tied to the number of contacts that you have in your platform. Uh, so let's say over time, if you, uh, if you add more people, obviously, or to, your, to your website and your, to your CRM, uh, you might have to spend more on that tool. Uh, same thing with creative production. Um, you want to factor in any additional or, or changes in the cost that you have here. So let's say here we're going to spend a bit more because we have this campaign, bigger campaign coming up. Here we're going to spend a bit more than the average because we have this big campaign coming up. Okay, so that's really having that picture in front of you for all the items, but really the important one um, that you really have to kind of have some logic of how you come up with the budget is the media spend, right? And the steps that I explained, I think, are a good way to a sensible way to uh, to come up with these values. Uh, Matthew, please go ahead. Yeah, when you do an upsell or cross sell, uh, how does this ratio gets affected? Yeah, so if the upsell is happening organically, um, then you wouldn't have to worry about changes of, um, of that. So if, if the upsell is coming through coming through a paid media channel, uh, then, then you can probably have uh, another set of calculation for that. But if it's happening organically, you don't have to worry too much about it because it would fall into the lifetime value without affecting uh, the spend or that. Yeah. But in the case of paid media, if you're, if you're doing paid media for upselling and cross selling, then maybe what you can do is you can have, you can do this whole exercise separately for retention activities. So you can look at this as acquisition budget planning, and then you have another exercise for retention uh, budget planning. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Now let's jump over to this Google sheet. All right, so this is how you would uh, practically do this on a, on a Google Sheet, uh, and we'll uh, we'll share that with with everyone. Uh, but in the case of lead gen, uh, so it's the same same concept. So we have here the target that we want to achieve. Let's say it's three customers. Uh, we we estimate the lead to customer rate of let's say being ten percent. Uh, this means that we need to generate thirty uh, leads to get those customers. Assuming the conversion rate on the website is 3%, this means that we need to drive 1,000 clicks to the website. Assuming the cost per click is $2.5, this means that our budget required is $2,500 to get those customers. Uh, and then from there, we work out the cost per lead. So dividing this by the number of leads. And then the cost per acquisition, so dividing this by the number of customers. Uh, and then over here, you can see <clears throat> the, um, the average customer value, so how much money you make from one customer uh, from first time purchase, so it's gonna be $800. Um, so this means that your ROI per customer is 0 0.96, because you're basically comparing the cost of acquisition with the revenue you generate from the customer. Uh, and then you can factor in here, okay, this is the profit per customer. Um, and then, so it's in the negative obviously, because the ROI is less than one. 
And then if you factor in the frequency rate, so how many times you're expecting this customer to buy from you throughout the lifetime, let's assume it's three times. This means that the lifetime value here is 2,400. Uh, so in this case, the lifetime ROI is three times. So you're comparing 2,400 to 833. So that's about three times ROI, and then that's lifetime profit. Okay? So it's the exact same steps that we covered, but just on a, on a Google Sheet with formulas, right? So what you're doing here is to actually use the sheet, you would only edit the blue cells, these, these ones, and everything, everything else will change. So if I change this from, from three to 10, everything else will change. If I change this from 10 to let's say 20, everything over here is gonna change. If, if my conversion rate goes from three to let's say seven, you can see everything here changes and the budget changes, of course. If your CPC goes down from this to 1.8, again, everything changes. Okay, so all of these other numbers are influenced by the, um, the blue cells that you edit here. Okay? Frequency rate changes, everything else is gonna change. If your average customer value is I don't know, 300, then again, RI changes, right? So um, it's, a, it's a nice handy way of you uh, uh, doing this planning exercise. Just make sure that you don't edit anything except for the blue cells. Okay? All right, same exact thing, but for e-commerce, right? So in the case of e-commerce, you're looking at the number of target number of orders. Expected conversion rate, it's gonna give you this number of clicks. Expected cost per click, it's gonna give you this budget, which means your cost per acquisition is $40. Assuming your average order value is $50, this means that your ROI per order is this number and the profit per order is this. Assuming the frequency rate is four times, it's an average the customer buys from you four times throughout your lifetime, then this means that your average customer lifetime is 200. So then your lifetime ROI is this and profit ROI is that. Uh, lifetime profit is that. Okay, so exactly the same thing, but just practically on a Google Sheet that you can you can use. Uh, any questions on on this so far? All good. Yeah, Matthew, please go ahead. Now we considered the cost of acquisition and we made all these metrics. Now to retain the customer for long term, you have additional costs, right? Yeah, so it depends on how, uh, depends on if your retention activities are using paid media or organic media. It can now be most, a, sorry, go ahead. It can be a mix, right? It can be a mix, it can be a mix. And in the case that it's a mix, then you probably wanna do the exercise for paid media, exact, exactly the same thing that we did uh, for paid media for, for retained users, right? So not looking at new users anymore. So you can still look at the, you know, how many, um, you know, how many clicks you want to generate, um, you know, what's the conversion rate, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Now, most retention activities in, in most cases are going to be coming through organic media. And actually, what you want to do is you want your paid media to get you on new users. And once they come in, you want most of your retention to be done organically, All right? So whether it's email, SMS, WhatsApp, calling, whatever the organic activity zone. Um, but ideally, you want to rely mostly on, on organic media for retention. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right, now moving on to awareness. Now, the thing is you can, you can do this not only for paid media, you can literally do it for any activity, okay? So, that, so let's say in the case of uh, still paid media, but in the case of awareness, okay? So let's say your goal is impressions. It's not orders, it's not customers, just impressions. So you can put your target here, estimate the CPM, it's gonna give you the spend needed, and then estimate the cost per click, uh, the CTR, sorry, it's gonna give you the number of clicks. Uh, same thing if your objective is video views, you can, you can put a target of what target video views you wanna have, estimate the CPV, it's gonna give you the budget, estimate the view rate, it's gonna give you the number of impressions. Same thing if your objective is engagements, put your engagements target, estimate the CPE, it's going to give you the budget, estimate the engagement rate, it's going to give you the number of impressions. Same thing if your objective is clicks. Put the target clicks, estimate the CPC, it's going to give you the spend, and then estimate CPR, and then you can work out the impressions. Um, if you're doing SEO, if you have a target of impressions from SEO, again, put the impressions target, 
estimate the CTR, it's going to give you clicks. Estimate conversion rates, going to give you conversions. Uh, or if you have a target of clicks or SEO, put the target clicks. Estimate CTR is going to give you impression. Estimate conversion rates, going to give you 500. Right. Um, so really, this this concept or these steps or this methodology can literally be applied to any marketing activity or any objective. As long as you understand these connections between these metrics, that's why in the previous session I wanted to uh, do, do those couple exercises that we did to try and connect these metrics together, because then it becomes very easy for you to do proper planning that's based on logic or based on data, right? as opposed to as opposed to assumptions. All right. Now, wh what I'd like you guys to do is uh, so I think you have access now to these um, to these sheets. Uh, let's spend maybe 10 minutes or so working on this. Uh, what I'd like you guys to do is I'd like you to use uh, whichever uh, whichever template that you think is that you want to work on, whichever is, whichever is relevant for you. Uh, so let's say if you're a B2B company, you want to use the EGM template. I want you to input here, uh, change these blue, num blue cells to match your numbers right, for your business. Um, and try to work out the budget required for whatever your goal is, whether it's lead gen, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's awareness, you know, any of these awareness uh, activities. Cool. Uh, any questions on exercise? We're all good? Good. Okay, so I'm starting the timer for 10 minutes. We would highly recommend uh, if you have your team members around you, to use whatever platform to work on this together, uh, whether you want to do it via chat, whether you're in the same office. So that is highly recommended. If not, you're all alone on this, uh, it's fine. Feel free to work on it alone. And Tariq will be here in the main room in case you have any questions. Okay, so 10 minutes starting now. Uh, this is uh, lead gen. Okay. So 100 customers okay. with a 10% conversion lead to customer. Yeah. So which is 1,000 leads and conversion rate is 2.3%. Okay. Which gives 43,478 uh, website clicks and uh, cost per click is uh, $1.2. Okay. So, and the average customer value is $800. Yeah. And average frequency, uh, three. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you have these numbers and uh, these numbers make sense to you in terms of the ROI per customer and the lifetime ROI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And especially when you can upsell, upsell and uh, Cross sell in uh, due course. Yeah, gotcha. gotcha. And these numbers are based on historical data, or uh, you estimated them? This is uh, based on our current estimates because we are yeah. starting digital marketing. So this is based okay. on the industry average what we call. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Thanks, Matthew. Would anyone like to? Anyone else would like to share their numbers? Let's take one more. Maybe uh, e-commerce. Anyone on the e-commerce side? Or we can take another lead gen. No, no one wants to volunteer as tribute. You'll get a prize from Takadam. You gotta give some Takadam a few volunteers. I mean, what happened to the with Tarek hashtag guys? <laughs> oh yeah, let's check on that. <laughs> All right, anyone else? Any brave souls out there? Expose your uh, company numbers. <laughs> we're, all, we're all friends here, it's a safe space. No? Um, I wonder right. who would be interested. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna pick randomly, guys. <laughs> Go back to school days, the annoying teacher that uh, randomly picks. I mean, me. I see Noor has un unmuted, so I, I feel like there's it, an yeah. intention. 
I can start with this. Great number. So we have uh, 45 customers. Okay. Uh, That's lead gen? A lead gen to begin with, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we have average customer value. Um, I mean, that's one of the questions. So should we calculate? So because we launched two months ago, so should we calculate the ones who are like for one year so uh, like um, full year? So we have two plans: one year and uh, one month. So should we calculate the average between them, or how should we calculate it? Yeah. So I guess if you're if you're not specifically going to focus on one or the other, and you're just looking at overall, then yeah, you could probably take the average of both and and work with that. But I, I guess maybe uh, later on down the line, you might see that one plan is more popular than the other. And in that case, maybe you might uh, have separate plan plans. Okay, so uh, the weighted average between the two is 44. Okay. Okay, and uh, frequency rate. So far, I mean, um, I mean, calculate just the churn rate, which is good. So I extended it, so it would be six. Um, okay. And uh, for the lead customer rate, uh, it's, uh, it's 18 percent and the mm -hmm. conversion is three percent uh cost yeah. per click 0.45 0.4 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. cool sounds good then that's a that's a case where uh on the first purchase it's negative but then it becomes positive uh, yeah. later on yeah very good cool all right thanks guys i think um yeah if you if you follow this and again like i mentioned this can be applied to uh, not only uh, you know bottom line goals like bottom funnel metrics, but also for awareness activities. You can follow the same principle for paid or organic. You can again follow the same uh, structure, but this really just brings brings uh, more of a scientific way of coming up with budgets as opposed to uh, throwing uh, budgets. Uh, all right, cool. Um, any questions before we have one last thing to do, which is a pop quiz. I don't know if you guys are up for a pop quiz. Yeah, um, but maybe we before we go there, let's have maybe just a five, four or five minutes of any questions on anything that we discussed today. Any questions? Feel free to just. Uh, Will we well, see you tomorrow? Sorry. Let's uh, Abdul Rahman from Pebbles, and then we can move on to the next person. Okay, uh, how can I know which is better for me, a click and engagement and impression? How do they determine which uh, type of uh, metrics is good for whatever I'm doing? Okay, all right, good question. I think we can uh, probably tie that back to the first session uh, when we talked about the funnel. Um, so we, we know for a fact that when someone sees your uh, your brand or your company for the very first time, we know that the vast majority of these users are not going to immediately buy from you, right? So the first thing we want to do is we're going to split our activities into at least top funnel and bottom funnel, if not top mid funnel, uh, top mid and bottom, right? So in that case, then all the top activities, all the top funnel activities should not be concerned with bottom funnel metrics, right? Meaning that if you're running a campaign with the objective of just getting new people to your site, or let's say just getting uh, reaching new people, so let's say things like impressions or uh, or video views, and all, then these are going to be the metrics that are going to be used for those set of campaigns, and you're not going to be looking at leads or conversions for those campaigns because those campaigns, their objective is just top funnel. Uh, and then your mid funnel activities, you might say that my metrics for that would be let's say clicks or a free demo or uh, a free registration on the website. So then those metrics, these campaigns are only concerned with those metrics and they have nothing to do with impressions or video views or conversions for that matter, right? Because their, their purpose is just made fun activities. And then the bottom funnel activities, uh, you're not gonna be concerned with clicks and impressions and the upper funnel metrics. You're gonna be concerned with bottom funnel metrics. So conversion, conversion rate, CPA or, or CPO or CPL, sorry. Um, so I would say uh, the metric, the, your, your decision of what metric to optimize for is tied to the objective of the campaign that you're running. Uh, that, that would be the, the, the straightforward way of looking at that. Cool. All right. Hello, you had a question? 
Yeah, it's just, uh, will you, uh, will we see you tomorrow for the workshop? Yeah, so I'm going to be with you all of tomorrow. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, guys. Like, it would be good for me, but maybe not so good for you. No, but for me, it's perfect. So tomorrow is going to be all day with you. And then after tomorrow, I'm going to be there also half, half of the day. So yeah, I'm with you all day tomorrow. Yeah, because I want, I'd like to do the exercise and check with you tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We'd like to do the exercise and check. So you will have uh, mentorship hours uh, scheduled with Tarek and Abdullah after the sessions. So their candidly links will be posted on the mentors page. So you're able to book a one-on-one -on -one and do that exercise with Tarek or Abdullah if you want. Okay, what up? Any other questions? If we don't have any any questions, I think they're ready for their pop quiz, Tariq. Oh boy. Okay. 